The Poetics of Space, by Gaston Bachelard, Chapter Two: House and Universe. In the preceding chapter, I pointed out that it was reasonable to say we read a house or read a room, since both room and house are psychological diagrams that guide writers and poets in their analysis of intimacy. We shall now read slowly several houses and rooms written by great writers. One. Although at heart a city man, Baudelaire sensed the increased intimacy of a house when it is besieged by winter. He speaks of Thomas de Quincey's joy when, a prisoner of winter, he reconned with the help of the idealism furnished by opium. The scene takes place in a cottage in Wales. Quote, Isn't it true that a pleasant house makes winter more poetic, and doesn't winter? Add to the poetry of a house, the white cottage set at the end of a little valley, shut in by rather high mountains, and it seems to be swathed in shrubs. Quote, I have underlined the words in the short sentence that belong to the imagination of repose. What a quiet setting for an opium eater reading Con in the combined solitude of dream and thought. As for the passage Baudelaire devoted to it, no doubt we can read it the way we can read any easy, too easy passage. A literary critic might even be surprised by the naturalness with which the, this great poet has used commonplace images. But if, while reading this oversimplified passage, we accept the daydream of repose it suggests, if we pause over the underlying words, it soon brings tranquility to body and soul. We feel that we are living in the protective center of the house in the valley. We too are swathed in the blanket of winter, and when we feel warm because it is cold out of doors. Further on, in this deep winter, artificial paradise, Baudelaire declares that dreamers like a severe winter. Every year they ask the sky to send down as much snow, hail, and frost as it can contain. When they really need our Canadian and Russian winters, their own nest will be all the warmer, all the downier, all the better beloved, like Edgar Allan Poe, a great dreamer of curtains. Both led in order to protect the winter grid house from cold, added heavy drapery that hung down to the floor. Behind dark curtains, snow seems to be whiter. Indeed, everything comes alive when contradictions accumulate. Here Baudelaire had furnished us with a centered picture that leads to the heart of a dream, which we can then take over for ourselves. No doubt we shall give it certain personal features, such as peopling Thomas de Quincey's cottage with persons from our own past. In this way, we receive the benefits of this evocation without its exaggerations. Our most personal recollections can come and live here, and through some in. Definable current of sympathy, both less description has ceased to be commonplace, but it is always like that. Well-determined centre of reverie are means of communication between men who dream as surely as well. Defined concepts are means of communication between men who think. Baudelaire also speaks of a canvas by which show snow a thatched cottage on the edge of a wood. In winter, the sad season contained certain of the effects that Le Vieux of God wrote. Baudelaire seems to me to constitute the very essence of winter happiness. A remain, reminder of winter strengthened the happiness of inhibiting. In the realm of the imagination alone, a reminder of winter increases the house value as a place to live in. If I were to make an expert evaluation of the on. Onarism in De Quincey's cottage, as believed by Baudelaire, I should say that there linger about it the insipid odor of opium, an atmosphere of drowsiness. But we are told nothing about the strength of the walls, or the fortitude of the roof. The house pops up, no struggle. It is as though Baudelaire knew of nothing to shut himself in with but curtains. This absence of struggle is often the case of the winter house in literature. The dialectics of the house and the universe are too simple, 
and snow especially reduces the exterior world to nothing rather too easily. It gives a single color to the entire universe, which, with the one word snow, is both expressed and notified to those who have sh found shelter. Humboldt himself said, "It was like a winter's night, with snow to stifle the world for certain." In any case, outside the occupied house, the winter cosmos is a simplified cosmos. It is a non-house in the same way that many physicians speak of a non-I. And between the house and the non-house, it is easy to establish all sorts of contradictions. Inside the house, everything may be differentiated and multiplied. The house derives reserve and refinement of intimacy from winter, while in the outside world. Snow covers all tracks, blurs the world, muffles every sound, conceals all colors. As a result of this universal whiteness, we feel a form of cosmic negation in action. The dreamer of houses knows and senses this, and because of the diminished entity of the outside world, experiences all the qualities of intimacy with increased intensity.